Hello, good morning, everyone. It's my privilege to introduce uh, Dr. Liu Xiebo and, uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, Robert Deletti to, uh, to start uh, this uh, latest advance in CTO technique uh, section. So the first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Liu Xiebo from China, from Shanghai, to uh, present his uh, uh, stem uh, CTO recanalization using IVAS guided uh, integrated approach. Dr. Liu, please. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. Dear all, I'm Xiebo Liu from Tongji Hospital, Shanghai, China. It's my great honor to present here. My lecture is regarding IVAS guided integrated approach to treat the uh, stem based CTO lesion. So, so let me talk about uh, three tips for this presentation. In this presentation, as follows: First of all, we select uh, the angiogram view for penetration and uh, to perform uh, IVAS. Uh, if you look at the uh, right uh, left case, you can see it's difficult to uh, detect uh, the angio point for CTO. So, so after career review, the angiogram. We select angel view to career separate side wedge and the CTO vessel. Next, IVAS imaging is usually performed from the side branch that is uh, close to the CTO. So, next, uh, uh, type two is we integrate uh, we integrate uh, IVAS detector CTO credit into angiogram to accurate position and the characteristic. Uh, uh, the entry point. In this auto LD CTO, we use the spider view and perform IVAS imaging from the rimbus to C in point. IVAS detector CTO corona is a valuable anatomic landmark, landmark to indicate the entry point. So in this case, the LD CTO corona is behind the circum uh, CT, uh, behind the uh, circum corona. So we integrate the IVS detector CTO corona into angiogram. So in this uh, picture, we the red arc means the entry point. So it's very clear we can see where is the entry point of this CTO osteo LD CTO. So the final we actually uh, penetrate the proximal cap and IVS garden. We have the as uh, a tool strategy for the different situation. Strategy one is uh, for direct IVAS guidance. Uh, if you look at uh, the case one, you can see there are a lot of large vessels like, uh, like a left man. Also, we make the tip of the Conquest Pro a special shape with long and acute second band that only for the cap penetration purpose. Next, uh, to penetrate under direct IVS guidance. After success penetration, mass cat was advanced a few minutes into the cap through the con uh, Conquest Pro. And we use the, the second uh, new guideware to, to uh, exchange and in introduce through the microcatheter and across into the seg a CTO segment. So if we use the strategy, uh, we this is for indirect IVS guidance. Just like the case two, there are little room for the wire manipulation and the IVS uh, pullback. So we use the special view to penetrate with the Conquest Pro. After check, after uh, penetration, we check IVS and find the wire is too close to the corridor. So don't don't remove and just leave this wire guide wire it's a mark. Use another conquest to just elevate the penetration di direction one two millimeter based on the first guide wire. It's the mark. So advance it into the proximal cap and then advance IVAS catheter to check it again. So in summary, we use uh, an optimal angiogram projection to perform penetration based on the combination of the IVAS detector, CTO, creator, and angiogram appearance. I could penetrate to the proximal cap by IVAS. In addition, con conventional techniques, some special tests should, should be considered. Usually, 
signal integrated approach can treat a non stem CTO. Even if uh, failed, it is still help to the, help improve the success of the retrograde approach. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Liu, uh, because uh, time is limited. I just uh, wondering uh, one question uh, uh, for you, uh, the, because um, usually the CTO is a long lesion, a long segment. How to uh, promise uh, the, this uh, IWS guidance? It can be uh, um, the, the 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 wire can be back to the distal uh, true lumen. It's very uh, interesting. The second thing is uh, uh, integrated. Uh, if integrated go to the first lumen, is this it, uh, it still have a possibility uh, to get the uh, case uh, success because we have ADR technique, we have retrograde the technique, so that. So that you, do you think this is a, a very, uh, very most important, uh, uh, you know, web CTO PCI? So please answer yeah. our question very uh, shortly, briefly, because we have don't have much more time. Yes, yes, yes. But I think uh, also the CTO technique included by the different approach. But I think if we face uh, this uh, special lesion. With with non stem per CTO lesion, so I think I was very important to detect and guide your penetration. If for penetration is good, so maybe we can use this simple integrated approach to finish this oh, CTO lesion. Okay, thank you very much. So the yeah. next speaker gonna be uh, Dr. Gary. Uh, he he comes from uh, Northland. Please, uh, Prof. Gary. Uh, Hello, thank you for the presentation. Indeed, I'm Roberto Di Letti and I'm working in uh, the Thorax Center in Rotterdam. So for the sake of time, I'm just starting to present uh, uh, the case. is a case of, uh, uh, as you said, uh, ipsilateral uh, collateral navigation in an epicardial vessel. So this was a, a male patient of uh, 69 years old with an history of PCI in the LAD and the LCX, uh, and this patient presented with a, a out of hospital cardiac arrest. He was seeing a good ventricle uh, function with ischemia in the inferior wall, and you can see here that there is an occlusion in the mid distal right involving also the bifurcation, was long calcified, so we gave a, a JCTO score of two. And just because it was involving also the bifurcation, we decided to start with a retrograde approach for safety for uh, for the bifurcation so we started with a retrograde approach and you see we tried to find a, a good septal to go from the left system to the distal right but there was no a clear uh, septal uh, connection there so we came back to the right next slide please and we uh, we started actually an integrated approach, but as you can see in the uh, right panel, you can see that there is already a dissection. So the wire went in the subintimal space, and we were already jeopardizing the bifurcation in the distal right. So we tried, we decided to stop this uh, uh, this approach integratedly, and we decided to use another way. Next slide. As you can see here, there is a, a, an epicardial vessel, very tortuous and small, uh, that is uh, coming from the proximal right to the distal right. So we, we tried to navigate it, and as you can see, we succeeded with uh, uh, um, dedicated wire, uh, let's say, for epicardial, which is the uh, SUO3 uh, wires and, and uh, a caravel microcatheter, so we were able to navigate this uh, micro uh, channel, let's say, and we went in the distal right. Next. So you see here that we made a full loop uh, from the uh, ipsilateral epicardial collateral and we went up to the uh, distal right. We made a dissection retrogradely. We already had a dissection uh, uh, from the uh, proximally. So we made a reverse cart uh, technique and we ended with our uh, retrograde wire in the uh, in the catheter in the in the guiding catheter as you can see there uh, next slide another problem at this stage was the fact that this vessel was very calcified and very tortuous and as you can see was difficult to advance the microcatheter up to the guiding 
So we had to perform a technique that is the uh, uh, anchoring balloon, but uh, usually we perform this technique uh, trapping the wire in the guiding. In this case, it was not possible, of course, because it was an ipsilateral collateral and we would have trapped also the microcatheter. So we had to do an intravessel uh, anchoring balloon, a trapping of the wire intravessel, as you can see there. Uh, and then, thanks to this, uh, this balloon increasing our support, we were able to advance the microcatheter. Next one. And then, of course, we were able to stand the old vessel. As you can see, we perform an OCT, and despite the calcification, we observed that there was no edge dissection, and the stand was well expanded, uh, also with a, a reasonable symmetry index and eccentricity index. Next slide. You have probably noticed that there was some spasma in the distal edge of the stand, but here you can see that a two weeks uh, angiogram, so after uh, 14 days, we saw that the spasm was gone, the vessel was open and with a good flow. The patient, after one year follow-up, was still asymptomatic, asymptomatic and had no cardiovascular events. Thanks. So this is Thank you uh, very much. the result. Thank you very much. It's a very good result. Thank you uh, for your uh, excellent uh, presentation. And so that I have a question for you. Uh, yeah, because uh, you're using the uh, epicardial collateral for the retrograde and the uh, PCI. Uh, in terms of uh, safety, uh, you know, in the open uh, clinic try uh, and uh, other study, they uh, show the epicardial collateral perforation is uh, the, the, the possibility is about the 10%. The clinical perforation is about the 4.8%. So uh, how do you uh, avoid this kind of uh, perforation? So, of course, epicardial vessel is, a, first of all, a final step that you get when the other approaches are not working. So, when you failed other strategies, your, uh, the epicardial is uh, almost the last uh, choice that you have. But still, when you decide to do them, uh, you to navigate epic, epicardial vessel, you need to take into account that you need to have uh, a, a skill set that is uh, advanced for the epicardial navigation, and you have to have also the appropriate materials. So appropriate wires, appropriate microcatheters, and you need to be able to use them in, an, uh, in the most uh, safe uh, way. So I think it's a combination of skill set and materials. And, and of course, this is coming with, uh, with time. So you need to have uh, a lot of experience with this uh, particular subset of, uh, of, uh, uh, of lesion and vessels to be able to navigate them safely and to perform the PCI safely with them. Thank you so much. If I were you do this case, uh, I will present my uh, technique. So the, how about in China? China, the, has a lot of uh, PCI uh, 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 cases. So the uh, last year, uh, China have done a one million, more than one million uh, CTO PCI. My maximum uh, rich uh, CTO PCI usually is uh, more than 400 uh, cases. So uh, it's very busy for for uh, us, for Chinese uh, CTO operator. So that we have to do the, uh, we have to go to ESC. I uh, always mention that the C CTO PCI should be uh, efficient, safe, and uh, cost effectiveness. So the, uh, we have to um, simplify the procedure and uh, uh, reduce uh, procedure risk and uh, uh, in, uh, reduce the, the, the cost. Next, please. So how to improve it? Uh, use the CZ0 septal collateral is uh, much useful. Uh, in uh, recent uh, years, I did a lot of uh, retrograde PCI. The, in 2018, the total uh, retrograde PCI is about uh, 231. Last year, uh, in my hospital, I just the, the retrograde PCI case uh, decreased is about 130. But outside of uh, my hospital is about uh, 103. The total uh, retrograde PCI is about uh, 233. 
and uh, we uh, use more and more um, uh, septal gradual as a uh, uh, channel. Now, in last year, it's near about 80%. Uh, 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 80%. So, now how about the CC0 septal gradual using? Now, the, in the recent year, it's increased. So, that in last year, 2019, it's about uh, 20, uh, 25% uh, septal using is uh, CC0. Next, please. So, this is a typical uh, procedure. My fellow tried to using a very torture, torturous uh, septal. It's a connector uh, distal uh, of a RCA, P, uh, PDA. So that it's a field because it's a two torturous. Click, please. So I just uh, go the first uh, septal. It's very thin, it's very small. I do the tip of injection. We cannot find any connection to the PDA. But I think this shape is good for the wire uh, closing. So I use the Sion Black. Next, please. Sion Black. This is a Sion Black. So I uh, use this uh, wire to navigate the, the, the CC0, uh, uh, CC0 septal gradual. It, it can close. So it uh, looks like very uh, efficient. Already. So uh, I like, uh, if I, if, uh, uh, Dr. Diretti, if uh, this case uh, happened in my hand, I will use this technique. Next, please. So the, what, what view should be taken uh, when we uh, uh, negotiate the CC0 creature? Uh, what kind of a septal should we surf in? What wire should we use? We can discuss about that. So uh, next, please. So th this is uh, the industry, the, the, the uh, information uh, we, we uh, usually use uh, Firehawk. This, uh, this is a new one. It's a revolutionary delivery, uh, uh, very good to, to close the CTO. And uh, next, please. Because the CTO usually uh, has a long force lumen without uh, endothelial cells, uh, but the uh, Firehawk family has excellent uh, faster hearing and uh, future. In the, it will be a very extra low dose uh, serenomous do, uh, dosage and with a bare metal uh, safe uh, facing uh, endothelial size. So it's, it's, it's in, in, the, in China, it's very, uh, it's, I think it's the best uh, standard for CTO PCI. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, 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 Dr. Liu. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Deledi. It's our pleasure to uh, uh, join together to discuss the, the CTO PCI. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye.